Okay guys, how you doing? We're gonna go back into a phantom draft here. Got a red black deck, uh, sorry, green black deck that I've been playing. Uh, got one win, posted up the draft earlier and the first game. Very close sort of nail biting game, managed to pull out a win in the end. Quite happy with that. It's a bit of a strange one, everybody's pretty... I've got two green heroes with high defense, everybody else is kind of high power. So I keep running into tough decks. Decks with high green creatures, like high defense green creatures, uh, red creatures, uh, red heroes, sorry, which kind of makes things really tough. Like, I'm really struggling to sort of power through a lot of the time. It ends up coming down to relying on a siege unit, like some of the um, Thunder Hides, to pull through with, this, with that siege damage because it carries on to the tower even if the unit's blocked. And it's just what you need. But everybody, I mean, everybody seems to draft these things. It's it's strange how many there seem to be in the in the game. Hmm, I don't really want to use either of those spells. That's unfortunate. He's not going to be able to kill somebody else. He would have been a really good contender just to take her out in a round. None of my guys are matched up with their heroes, so track is not great. Hmm. Playing creatures here is not going to help very much. If I put that guy there... Uh, I think we're fine. We're not really going to be able to get much going on here. Opening turn. We've got two cards to play. Nothing particularly useful. This guy can come in on the side. 25% chance he hits Enchantress. Eh. Even if he doesn't, getting some chip damage on the tower. Swinging that in our favour a little bit early on. Bounty Hunter's not in a good position to hit, hit Enchantress, though. That's, that's frustrating. These may go for each other at some point. There's a 25% chance they turn to hit each other. Got some creeps here, so he's going to keep getting chunked down. Hmm. Hmm. So I can get somebody to kill Enchantress. That's pretty good. So this round I think one of these two heroes is going to kill Enchantress. I think if I put him here he can't attack Phantom Assassin so I can definitely use Phantom Assassin for that. Uh, or I can definitely use Debbie. No, not definitely. Oh no I can. He has to attack the creep in front of him. So when there is an enemy across from you you have to attack it. If you're free you have a 25% chance to attack left or a 25% chance to attack right. But if there's somebody opposite you, you have to attack them. I'm building up tokens on this. Every turn it gets a charge counter and I can destroy it at any point to uh, remove... Uh, to give me some a bunch of gold, essentially. Hmm, do I kill this guy to stop him playing cards in that lane? Or do I kill this guy to stop him playing cards in that lane? Now I wish I had tracked. I could track there. I could track any either of them. Oh no, it has to be in my lane. Uh, choose allied hero. I think we kill this guy, and then we just take that lane. Get the gold bonus. Nice. <clears throat> it now stops him playing green cards in that lane completely. This lane should be okay. I'm going to be able to fight him, you know, if he plays other stuff. It's not too important. This lane's kind of stalled. This lane's kind of stalled. I mean, he'll be winning in this lane now. Hmm, okay. So I'll lose Debbie. Like, I'll have to go into this lane next turn. Hopefully Lycan can kill Venomancer next turn, but he'll still get get to do... Uh, I wonder if I can do 6 damage to that. I don't think I can. Oh, yeah, he buffs plus 2 attack. It's still not enough on either of them. <clears throat> That's really frustrating. I think what we do is we track... And we wait. None of the cards I could have played would kill it. 
Maybe I should have just got a creature down uh, in case he could buff it. We're going to win this lane, but it's just whether he keeps getting reinforcements in it or not. As to how important it is, I think I just wait. I'm going to have Lycan up next turn in this lane. I'm going to play one of these two cards. <clears throat> Hopefully I get creep anyway. So with three of his guys blocked. I think I just go for an extra, a bit of overkill. One of the things I've realised is you can always TP heroes out. That's frustrating. Can I target the tower? Oh, I can, perfect. So I can always TP out the heroes, but you can't TP out creeps, obviously. Um, if you're unlucky, the enemy will just keep building creeps up, and you won't. I mean, that's a bit of RNG that kind of gets frustrating. Fully heal a unit. I don't think we need to. Maybe I need to heal this guy. He's going to take eight. This is his second turn, so he takes eight damage. I kind of want to save my money, though. I think saving money is fine <clears throat> for the moment. So we've got a creep. We're going to be able to block each of these. He's going to get two, though. So he's going to have two unblocked units by the end of the game. He's going to have two unblocked units by the end of the deployment phase, sorry. Oh, he's sending the ogre there. That's interesting because it could, it could trade with the bounty. It is going to trade with the bounty. That's pretty interesting. That's a bit of a gamble from him. <clears throat> so the Vermance is going to die. That's great. That's great for us. So I'm quite happy with this combat phase so far. He's got a big fat hand though. He's got a lot of cards in his hand. That's awkward. So Bounty will die now. Oh, Bounty would have died anyway. I'm not sure why that was necessary. I think he's just trying to turn that lane in his favour more. Uh, back to the first lane. Hmm. Anything I put in front of this guy is going to die. Ideally, I would have put something in front of this, just so it takes less damage. Uh, as it is, it's going to trade over a couple of turns. Actually, no, I'll, I'll kill it in one because of the buff from Lycan. That's fine. That's fine. Lycan doing some work here. Okay, that's... That's irritating, but he's taking four, so next turn if I get a creep in that lane, he's going to die. And I'd rather kill Beastmaster. Eh, this, guy's this guy's annoying because he keeps spawning creatures, which is kind of what I don't... I don't want him to do that. Hmm. He has no item cards, no health, no armor. I think what we do is we just kill off this guy win this lane properly he can't cast any spells in this lane after the combat phase he's just putting all his eggs in the other baskets now he's given up on this lane despite me not really you know two it's going to take two turns still to win that lane but it's two turns of having both those heroes there He doesn't have any items for health or armor, so that guy should still die. Okay, he's just getting value out of the lane before it before it's over. I'll play this down. I think, ironically, this lane is the lane that I'm going to abandon now. And try and go all in on these two lanes. <clears throat> We're going to end up base racing, essentially. Like, you always find that somebody gives up one lane and you base race for the second. The second and third lanes. What do I need more? Uh, the ability to ping is going to be very helpful because he has no units with armor. Okay. I feel like all of these are pretty reasonable, to be honest. We got a lot, of, a lot of gold from that track kill. Uh, in the center gave us 15. And I got another 5 from the ogre. 
So, we're going to get creep here. There's still two spaces. Of no black cards. But the extra hero is going to be useful. I think I just go in this lane. He's going the end lane, okay. So he's going to try and rush me down here. I'm already rushing up here. That creeps absorbing both heroes for a turn. That's kind of pivotal and really annoying. Hmm. It's got armor. That's really annoying. Um, I think what I can do is kill this Beastmaster. They're playing a musket, shooting it, and not accidenting it. I may put this Shield of Basilius on it as well. Hmm. He's going to kill Debbie. Hmm. Hmm. So he can't shoot anything else and kill it before combat and I get a chance to heal it. Okay, that will do. I can give it one armor, it's still taking one damage. Yeah, that looks like the only thing he could have done. Hmm. It's a big beat stick. I'm gonna take a lot of tower damage. Not anymore. Still not enough to save the Satyr, unfortunately. Uh, I may just heal. I think I keep the healing for something else. Uh, but I pop this, I get 12 gold. That's enough for the Horn of the Alpha. It's enough for any, any, item, any single item in the game, essentially. So next turn I can buy something big and tasty fat. He's got no creatures, no... Okay, so he's got no heroes in that lane, or this lane. He's getting two back next turn, though. Unfortunately, both of these have been distracted by one creep. That is absolutely horrendous for me. Bad enough that one of them has been distracted by it. <coughs> that 25% RNG kind of screwed it up. He doesn't realize he has to pass the turn. I can't cast things into other lanes. I want these guys to die, so I kind of want one of them to come up against the creep. I don't think there's going to be a chance for me to take the same lane twice, but then I'm struggling in both other lanes in terms of damage. I'm not winning either of these lanes yet. Really. like I'm winning this lane, but he has more creatures. So I have to be very careful. I could just try and go all in on this lane and try and beat it twice. And draw the other one out. I think that may be better because I can't. I can't cast spells in this this back lane, so it's practically just gone. Yeah, I think I just have to give that lane up completely and potentially prep that central lane for like taking it twice beating down the tower and then marching all the way to the ancient rather than trying to win this lane it's half the work but he's already got a massive board set up which makes it really awkward now this is the bit that we like plus two attack and pierce this could be very useful Take this first because there's an item underneath it. Okay, I, got, I like that. So 
the health armor. Disappointing there's no Horn of the Alpha behind it. I'm not going to lie. Uh, have armor on both of those guys. So I just need a weapon to put on Debbie. And then the rest goes on these guys. Uh, Bounty Hunter goes over here. Mm. Yeah, Bounty Hunter goes over here. I give him the Jasper Daggers and Shiva's Guard, and then he should be fine. It's basically plus four armor. I think it's pretty good. Pretty damn good. Hmm. I'll just give him the Ring of Tarask. And that's also fine. Ooh, that's not cool. That's very not cool. What the hell? That's absolutely horrendous. Oh, for fuck's sake. Right, fine. Fine, fine. You ass. Hmm. It's not really much to be done there. He's not playing black, so there's nothing he can really do to get rid of that now, I don't think. It's such a, so annoying that I didn't get that on somebody else. It's so annoying. Really, we needed to kill off his, his blue caster. Right, so we win this lane hard. I may as well cast some stuff so I can potentially get them back. Or even just to boost it up for the next time. He's going to get that next turn unless I can put... I have no heroes in that lane, so I have to buy... Not even if I buy a TP scroll, he's got this lane. Oh, man. Yeah, this is rough. He may just get both side lanes now. That battle of wills. No oh, friendly fire. Friendly fire just took out two of my hardest hitters. That kind of caught me by surprise. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that down in another one turn. 25, 25, 25, that'll be three turns, and then a fourth to finish. I mm. feel like we've lost. feel like I've run out of options. I'm going to have to hope that the creeps spawn well enough to block uh, one or two in, you know, in, in one of the two contested lanes, the two important lanes, so either blocking two creatures here or blocking two creatures here, uh, which would, you know, blocking this would be huge. Potentially stopping, like, ten damage. Leave me with one. He has two heroes to deploy next turn, though, so he's definitely taking that lane. Ah, oh, that's, that's pretty... pretty unfortunate. Hmm. I'm gonna have enough to draw Thunderhide Alpha. Oh man, it put it in this lane. God damn. I put both creeps in that lane. So he knows he can take this, unless one of these cards attacks sideways, unless the ogre attacks sideways. 
That's pretty brutal. He's putting one in that lane just to seal it, just to seal the deal. But it doesn't really make much difference because that just that just stops a creep. Thunderhide Alpha, please. There we go. Thunderhide Pack. Sorry, Thunderhide Pack. Ooh, ooh, that wasn't good. Okay. Hmm, so it will kill this guy. I'll still be taking 13. I will still be taking 13. So I've lost this lane. And then I've lost this lane later this turn. Nothing to do. Nothing to be done. That's... A massive pain in the ass. Not gonna lie, disappointed. Disappointed with that. Felt like it was going well. Felt like it was going better than that. And it turned on its head. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Well, yeah, that was. That was just unfortunate. It wasn't unfortunate, it was well played on his part, or their part. Um, if you can spot anything, guys, that I could have done differently to improve on that performance, let me know. Uh, I have a feeling that potentially I should have spent more effort on the third lane, rather than letting it degenerate into a stalemate. I think that's something I've been guilty of before as well, so I'm going to have to start bearing that in mind much more often. Um, Beyond that, like I can't, I can't see any, any like single plays that really stand out in my head as being sort of defining moments of that game. Like I really didn't feel like there was much that would have gone, nothing, nothing hung on sort of one or two plays. I, f I feel like, um, but rather just the entire thing being a bit of a letdown. Um, you know, potentially my play was not great willing to admit that there were probably some things I could have done better I didn't feel like I played a particularly tight game but I didn't feel like I did badly either given the scenarios that I was handed um, it's kind of becoming a little bit obvious for me after watching some other streamers talk about the the level of RNG in Artifact um, it kind of makes it f it's, it's part of why it feels like you're playing a MOBA but it's still, there's still too much pure RNG where something can go one way and be great or the other way and be terrible. Um, things like the 25% chance to attack to your left or right. Like both of them are, you know, if it happens, it's, it's usually fantastic. Except for the times, as in the middle lane on that game, uh, where both of my heroes ended up attacking one creep instead of attacking the tower, and that was 12 damage wasted. That was 12 damage just just disappeared, uh, soaked up by one creep. He didn't have a choice where to, he didn't have a choice where that creep went, and it landed in the optimum position to distract both my heroes. And that was two pieces of RNG: one for the creep placement, and then one for my attack patterns. And it's just God damn, like, that really, really felt like a brutal, uh, brutal way to lose on the back of things like that. Okay, guys, I'm going to try and recover. We're going to run another game after this, uh, but I'm going to sign off this episode. Um, yeah, so I look forward to catching you in the next one. Peace and love, guys. See you on the other side.